Hello, my name is Stuart. You are you, and you wish you were here. I wish you were here by Pink Floyd. That's the name of the song. That's a good intro to the video. Let's go with that. We're going to learn this song today. We're going to start with the intro that I was just playing. Sort of the main part of the song, right? Then we're going to kind of rush through the little introduction solo. Then we're really going to rush through the verse. Because I'm going to be so sick of making this video by then. What do you say we start at the very beginning? Very beginning, uh, this, here's a surprise. Kind of controversial. What is the first note of this song? If you listen to the original studio album that this song was on, which was called Handshake on Fire, uh, you, you will hear the first note being an open A string. But when you listen to Pink Floyd or Roger Walters, is that his name? God, I hope that's his name. I'm going to be embarrassed if I messed it up. Oh, I think that's his name. But I feel like I might be getting it conflated with Roger Daltrey, which is a different person. I'm going to embarrass myself. We're just going to go with it. I'll check it later. And if I'm wrong, I'll delete this everything that I've ever said in my life. <laughs> Uh, what was I? I was talking about the first note. Anyway, what, when they play it live, they play they play this third fret on the top string. I think on the album it just kind of cuts in and they just go. But anyway, we're just gonna start. We're gonna start like this because that's how they do it live. It's easier to start that way. It sounds good. This what is this gesture that I always do? I don't know what the point of it is. I don't know what it means. We should probably start the song. I would, I would like you to get a G chord ready to go. A G chord like this, we're gonna, this is kind of the foundation of the song. Get your third, nope, get your middle finger on the third fret of the top string. Then put your pointer finger on the second fret of the A string. Then your ring finger and pinky are gonna go down to the third fret on the high E and B string, those two bottom strings of the guitar like that. This is how I usually play G, and it's how you want to hold your hand for this song. Got it? Should sound like this. G chord. Beautiful. These two fingers are just going to hang out there for quite a while, so get used to it, get comfortable, get used to it. Okay. We're gonna just keep going. Would you please get your middle finger up on that top string like I said, and then play the top string all by itself. There it is, first note of the song. Then get your middle finger and your pointer finger the heck out of the way and play the open A string. Then you are going to hammer on to the second fret of the A string with your pointer finger. So that's like this, you played open A, then pointer finger just Bang! Hits the second fret right on the A string. You don't have to say bang when you do it. If you are not especially experienced with hammer-ons or you have no idea what they are, this is gonna be a little bit frustrating. You're gonna be like, I, I'm doing what he said, but I can't hear that second note. Or maybe you hear it just for a second and then it disappears. It's like, it's gonna take some practice. But here are a couple little tips. Here's tip number one. Don't pull your finger like eight inches away and then try to swing at it with all your might from super far away just do move your finger like an inch or two away just like that and then even from there if you just are intense about it intense but relaxed you can get a pretty good sound from that hammer on right there now here's my other tip instead of thinking like you're trying to hit the string try to think of it like you're trying to hit like a, a half an inch beyond the string like you're trying to push the string into the fingerboard of the guitar, into the neck of the guitar. A little bit of extra oomph, trying to push the string into the guitar, and then that helps you keep pressure on the string, because that's how you get some sustain from the note, is if you hit it, and then keep that consistent pressure on the note. I think that those tips were helpful to no one. Anyway, practice that hammer on a bunch. I don't care, I don't care about anything. Then you're gonna play the open D string like this. Those four notes right there 
probably the four most important notes of the song. See, everybody already knows what song it is. Let's, let's, what do you say we practice that a couple times? I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, one. Boom, bong, bong. 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 That, was in, that was intense. I had intense eye contact that whole time. Let's, let's keep going with the song. We're already like five minutes in. We've done nothing. Okay, after the open D, you are then going to put your fingers, these, these fingers over here, in an E minor type shape, but keeping these two fingers down here. So what I mean by that, here's just E minor, second fret on the A string, second fret on the D string, but then keep these down here. Ends up making it into an E minor seven chord. But that doesn't matter. You don't need to know that to play the song. Watch this, you're gonna go. E minor, and when you play that E minor, right when you push those fingers down, you're not gonna strum the whole chord, you're just gonna play the D string. So we've got boom, chicky, bang, bong. Boom, chicky, bang, bong. Let's do that one time together. One, two, three, four, one. Boom, chicky, bang, bong. Now we get to strum the E minor. So you've got boom, chicky, bang, bong. Then you're gonna strum down, down, up, up, down. I'm keeping the E minor with these two fingers. I'm strumming down, down, up, up, down. Let's do all of that together. One, two, three, four, one. Boom, chicky, bang, bong. Down, down, up up, down. Notice how light and wispy this chord sounds. That is because I am, I'm not trying to play these top, these top few strings, these low notes. I'm trying to avoid those. I'm really focusing on the high four strings, the four skinniest strings on the guitar. With the pick, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to hit those. Boom, chicky, bang, bong. Down, down, up, up, down. Let's go ahead and move on. Let's go ahead and move on. We'll have more time to practice the wispiness as we go. After that last drum down of the E minor, I would like you to play the open G string, the third string from the bottom right here. Fantastic, great job. Then you are going to play the D string, but keep your fingers over here. There we go. Then one more note, and then we'll recap because you know how I like to recap. You're going to remove your pointer finger and middle finger and play the open D string. So those three notes, we had the E minor chord over here, we played open G, we played the D string, and we got rid of these fingers and played the open D string. From the beginning, one, two, three, four, hey! Boom, chicky, bang, bong, down, up, up, down, G string, D string, open. Oh, we did it. My computer is dying. I'm gonna give it a chance to charge. We are at 31%, so good to go. This next part of the song, I think it's such a fun part to play. It's a hoot. Check this out. We just went like this. Wait, no, uh -uh. we just went like this. And we're on that open D, keeping the ring finger and the pinky down on the bottom strings. Then you're gonna go like this. Oh, uh, wait, I forget. Ah, I remember. You can't trick me, you can't fool me. You're going to strum. Just the bottom three or four strings, the high three or four strings, you're gonna strum down up. Very light and wispy. So we've got. You hear that? It's like G, bang, bang, down, up. Then. And only then are you going to get the full complete G chord going. That chord that we started the whole lesson with, with middle finger up on the third fret, pointer finger on the second fret, you're going to play the top string, the E string, all by its lonesome self, and then you're going to strum a whole G chord. So watch this. Is 
that nice? I think that's very nice. We're, look, we're gonna play the whole thing from the top. One, two, three, four, go! Notice how when I switched to the G chord, I like, I, 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 I just got very excited and rambled for quite a long time about nothing. So I decided I would just cut that part of the video off, I would calm down, regroup, and then we could learn the next part of the song. The next part of the song is literally the same as the part we just played. We do the same thing twice. We just do it over again. You want me to show you? Okay, okay. If you want me to, I'll show you. Watch this. That's what we learned. Then we do it again. But then we find we have a new part. So, okay, look, here's, here's the deal. Here's the deal. What we just learned, that's the main part of the song. That's the part, that's the part you're gonna practice a bunch cause right away, because it's fun to play. Sounds like the song. You like it, I like it, I wish you were here. Pink Floyd, Roger Walter. Here's Wa Wa Ha. Huh? I'm okay. Don't worry. I'm okay. I'm gonna be fine. I just wanted to say that first part of the song is the main part of the song. Spend some, spend some quality time with it. When you're ready, we'll learn the second part. The second part, very similar to the first part, just with a few differences. It's got a few differences. Second part goes like this. Starts the same. We go boom, chicky, bang, bong, bong, ki, bong. But then it, the strumming changes a little bit on this E minor seven, the E minor with these two fingers down here. We're gonna go like this, down, down, up, up. So last time we went down, down, up, up, down. Now we're just going down, down, up, up. And then it changes even more. You are going to keep your fingers over here, play the D string, then ditch your pointer finger and middle finger, play the D string again. Then, sorry, I had to think for a second there, and then I cheated. You see me look down there, because I have, I have some notes written down there. I'm kind of cheating. You're going to play the second fret on the A string. Just like that. I just use my pointer finger, play that second fret on the A string. It's a pizza pie. Then, you're going to play the open A string. Watch this. It's, I told you it was pizza, and it is. <laughs> Let's just keep going. A7 sus is what I call this chord because that's what it is. You keep your ring finger and your pinky in the same spot. Put these two fingers, I call them your pointer and your middle, you're gonna put those on the second fret of the middle two strings, like that. It's called an A7 sus, isn't that fun? So fun. On this A7 sus, you're gonna play down, down, up, up, down. Not too hard. Down, down, up, up, down. We have so many notes we've been playing with this song, but we have just a few more notes we have to add on to finish the introduction the song. We just played the A7 sus. We went down, down, up, up, down. Here's what comes next. We do our little hammer on thing that we started the song off with, but we're gonna leave out that first note, that third fret on the E string. We're gonna leave that out. We're gonna start with the open A, hammer on to the second fret, then play the open D, just like that. So it's down, down, up, up, down, hammer, like that. After that, we play this whole second half of the riff over again. You're like, what is the second half? I don't even know what the different sections are. Let me, let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. We go 
A7 sus, down, down, up, up, down, hammer, back to E minor, down, down, up, up, ping, pang, ping, pong, A7 sus, down, down, up, up, down, then we do our little hammer on again, but now we are finally at the end of the introduction, you're going to go to a big old G chord and you're going to go like this, G, G, top string, Like that. that. I didn't explain it at all. I just played it and made a weird face. I started talking and then I stopped talking because I became overwhelmed with the emotion of the song. Watch this. G. Like so we're going bingy bang G. Then here's, here's what our strumming is going to be like on this G chord. It's going to be G down, top string down, top string down, up, down. G. Oh, I got all mixed up again. I keep getting mixed up on this stupid G chord. How much of my anger do you think is fake? And how much do you think is actual frustration? It is between 0% and 100% actual frustration. Let's talk about this G chord. But let's let's talk about it. But let's like, let's actually do it right this time. Let's, can we start over? I mean, not the song, but just like are talking about this G chord. Let's t start over with the G chord. My stomach, did you hear my tummy? My tummy just made noise, you couldn't hear it. Now I just sound even more crazy. I wonder if I should become a monk. Do you think that would be a good idea? G chord, gonna go like this. You're gonna go strum, then you're gonna strum again. Then you're gonna play just the E string. Then you're gonna strum again. Then you're gonna play just the E string again. So that was like this. It was strum, strum, E, strum, E. Let's do that one more time. One, two, here we go. And strum, strum, E, strum, E. Then you're gonna go down, up, down, up. Everybody's favorite. Strum, strum, E, strum, E. Down, up, down, up. Do one more time. One, two, chicken pox and strum, strum, E, strum, E, down, up, down, up. Then we start that over again. We go strum, strum, E, strum. But then when we go back to the E, we're gonna go right back to the very beginning of the song. Like that. Watch, this is gonna blow your brain. One, two, G chord. Strum, strum, E, strum, E. Down, up, down, up, down. Strum, E, strum. And then you play the whole flipping thing over again. Isn't that exciting? And that's the whole intro. What, we sh what we're gonna do is I'm gonna play the whole intro for you. Then you'll know how it goes. And then we can be best friends. I wish you were here. One, two, three, four, hey. through the intro, I'm gonna take a, a second to compose myself. We're gonna rush through the solo. Oh, are we really gonna play the solo? There's so many notes in the solo. This is a terrible idea. Here's what I've decided we're gonna do. We're gonna learn the verse, cause that's just strumming chords. It's fun, it's easy, everybody can do it. I mean, maybe you can't if you don't, if you're not used to playing chords, but don't worry, you can learn. You're not dumb, don't worry, you're gonna do it. Um, and, and, and then, and then, I'm gonna show you the 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 the, the, the solo, um, but I'm gonna go through it so fast that it's not gonna make sense to anybody. It's just gonna be a waste of time.
That sound like a good plan? I think that's a good plan. Verse. We just played a bunch of G's. We just went. Then you are going to go to a C chord. Boom. C chord. Now, I got to tell you, though, uh, I believe the way that they actually play this song is a C over G, like this. C over G. So that's a C chord, but you take your ring finger, move it up to the E string, put your pinky on the third fret of the A string. So the grand uh, result of that is you've got your ring finger on the third fret of the E string, pinky on the third fret of the A string, middle finger is on the second fret of the D string. There's nothing on the G string, then your pointer finger is on the first fret of the B string, and those are the notes in the C over G chord. Let's learn the strumming pattern, okay? They don't do this strumming pattern exactly nonstop throughout the whole verse of the entire song, but this is basically the strumming pattern they do. Um, that was usually if I was like giving a bass lesson, that's when I would say basically get it, but I'm holding a guitar so it doesn't work. Here's the pattern. We're going to play down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. Uh, that was a lot of downs and ups. So it's down, then you wait, then down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down. Let's do that again. Down. Down, up, down, up, down. Then just down, up, down. So, so many downs and ups. Listen, listen to me play it. One, two, here we go. Down, down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down. And then when you repeat it, it sounds like this. Down, down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, down. little strumming tip. You notice how my arm is going like this, whether I'm hitting the strings or not? Watch, I'm going down, down, up, down, up. So after that first strum, that first strum is a long one. We wait a full beat before we play the next, the next strum. But I still, I move my arm as if I were strumming, almost like I'm pretending to strum, like it's a fake strum. Down, uh, down, up, down, up. Why do I do that? I do it just to, to keep a nice smooth motion. I'm keeping the beat. It's sort of like nodding your head or tapping your foot. I'm feeling the rhythm of the song and I'm feeling this smooth motion in my arm so I don't have to stop and start. I'm just, I'm just going with the flow of the song, guy. One, two, here we go. Down and down, up, down, up, down. Hey, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down. Hey, down, up, down. We've got three other chords we have to learn. You're going to play that pattern one time on the C over G. Boom. Bucket, bucket, bow. Bicky, bong. Then we have this nice little space where you're going to switch to a D over F sharp. What is D over F sharp? I'll tell you. So first you start with just a regular D chord, which is middle finger on the high E string, ring finger on the third fret of the B string, pointer finger on the second fret of the G string, third string from the bottom. That is a D. But we want a D over F sharp. That's where you take your thumb, comes up over the back, over the top of the neck. You're gonna reach over and you're gonna play the low E string on the second fret like that. So if you have an electric guitar or a steel string acoustic guitar, even if you have small hands, I think you can, you can comfortably do that. If you have a classical guitar, a nylon string guitar, the neck might be like this thick and your thumb is just like, I don't wanna do it. I don't wanna do it and I'm not gonna do it. And honestly, I understand because those nylon string guitars have some wide necks. Uh, so if you're playing classical guitar, I mean, you can try it. There's nothing wrong with trying it, but you can also just play a regular D. The difference between a regular D and a D over F sharp, that's a tiny different. The D over F sharp is just a little deeper, a little richer, a little Persever. G over, no, oh, C over G. D over F sharp. Then everybody's favorite, an A minor chord. Come on, A minor, you know it. Look at that. If you don't know it, go look it up. I'm not gonna teach it to you. 
So I'm just doing that strumming pattern once on each chord. We did it uh, C over G. We did it on the D over F sharp. We did it on the A minor. And now finally we're gonna do it on just a plain old regular G chord. Um, let's play that once all the way through to review it to make sure that you know the order of the chords. We'll do it nice and slow. There's no tricky business with switching from one chord to the next. You, the strumming pattern automatically gives you this little spot where you get to switch chords. So let's try it. One, two, here we go. And down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. Then the next one, I forgot what it was. One, two, C over G and down, down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, then D over F sharp. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, then A minor. Then G. Then we basically go through it again, but we're gonna swap the first two chords. What I mean by that is we're gonna start it over, but instead of going C over G to D over F sharp, we're gonna do D over F sharp and then C over G. And then we do the A minor and the G in the same order. We're gonna play the whole verse. I'm gonna kind of sing along. I don't know the words. We're gonna see what happens. One, two, three, four. So, so you think you can tell heaven from hell, blue skies from pain, symbols that I'll be on Like, I think that, I didn't mean it to be, but I think that was actually insulting to the song, what I just did. Um, I didn't know the words, and I should have reviewed them, and I would like to apologize to Mr. Floyd. That whole verse happens two times, and then we go back into the intro. So it goes intro, twice. Then it does the verse, twice. Then it goes back to the intro, twice. And now I cannot believe that we have to go over the intro solo. That sounds impossible. It sounds unbearable. Hi, I went on a walk. I ate some food. I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. I think I'm ready to learn this solo. It's not gonna be any funny business, no monkey business, no goofing around. There are four parts to the solo. I'm just gonna play one part then show you how to play it. I'm gonna play another part, then show you how to play that, and then we'll get out of here. I'll be able to have my nap. You'll be able to go to your disorder, and it's gonna be great. Here's part one of the solo. So here's what happened. I started off with that first little bit of the intro, it's not technically part of the solo, but I think it sets up the solo really nicely. So that's part one. You did that before. Then, time for some slides. Put your middle finger on the second fret of the G string. Very important that you use the fingers I tell you, because if you use other fingers, it's just not gonna, not gonna play out the way you want. So check it out. Middle finger, second fret of the G string. Play that note, then slide up to four. Then your pointer finger plays the third fret on the B string. No problem. Ring finger plays the fifth fret on the B string. Then play the B string open, and then back to pointer finger on the third fret. And then ring finger goes to the third fret on the G string, that third string from the bottom, Pointer finger gets ready on the second fret of the G string. You're gonna play the fourth fret, then pull off your ring finger, see if you can get a nice twang when you pull off, then pull off your pointer finger and get a nice twang going back to the open G. A little double pull off there. more notes. After that, you are going to, using whatever finger you want, I don't even care, I'm gonna use my middle finger, play the 
first fret on the A string, that note sounds terrible. We're not gonna stay there for long. In fact, as soon as you play it, like basically at the same time you're playing it, slide up to two, just like that. Then play the D string open twice. That slide, we don't really care about hearing that first note. We just want that little bit of pizzazz going into the second fret. Part one of the solo. No problem. Part two of the solo. Maybe the hardest part of the solo, but I personally think the most fun. With your pointer finger, you're going to smash down on the third fret of the high E and B string, like that. So just use your pointer finger, kind of flatten it out there, like a little mini bar. Push down on both of those strings, then strum both of those bottom two strings and immediately slide up to five. So your whole pointer finger is gonna slide from three up to five. Little tip for the slide, keep your thumb in the same place. Your thumb, you're gonna kinda pivot on the thumb. So your thumb kinda turns, but you're not gonna slide your thumb like that. Keep your thumb in the same place. And just do this little pivot motion. What do you think about that? I think it's pretty great. So we've got that slide up to five. Then go back to three. You don't have to slide this time and strum the third fret again. So it's... Then put your ring finger on the third fret of the B string, pointer finger on the second fret of the G string. You're going to push those down at the same time. Your middle finger's not doing anything. Almost just... You know what I almost just did with my middle finger. going to hold those two there. Now you're going to strum just the G and the B string little tip, the way I make sure I don't play the high E string is my ring finger on my picking hand just touches the E string. And that way, even if my pick hits that string, it's muted. Make sense? You're going to slide from two and three up to four and five on the G and B strings. Then strum the strings again up there and then slide back down to two and three. So it's... Now we've got this. Get rid of your pointer finger, but keep your ring finger there. Play the G and B strings again. Then something else happens. Oh, that's what happens. Put your pointer finger back onto the second fret. Slide back up to four and five. So now we've got this. Then Back to two and three, you don't have to slide this time. Play two and three on the G and B strings. Get rid of your pointer finger, play them again, then get rid of your ring finger and play them again. It's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of notes, that's part two. Moving on to part three. Bluesiest part of the solo. Uh, I took him. I okay. Where am I? Who am I? How am I? When am I? And uh, how am I? Did I already say that one? You're gonna slide from two to four again on the G string. Go to three on the B string. Play the open B string. Then fifth fret on the B string. Do we just do that? I think we did that in the first part. I think it kind of does the same thing again. Then we have to do what's called a pre-bend. On that fifth fret on the B string, bend it way up. Now, I have my ring finger on the fifth fret, but my middle finger and pointer finger are behind my ring finger on the same string, helping bend it so I can keep control of the string. You're gonna play the B string while it's bent, and then after you play it, bend it back down to its normal spot. Like that. Okay, we did that pre-bend, going into just the normal note. Then the third fret on the B string. Just keep adding more notes. Fourth fret on the G string. 
back to the third fret on the B string. And then second fret on the G string. So check this out. Okay, super bluesy part coming in here. You're gonna play the fourth fret on the G string, bend it, not a pre-bend, just a regular bend, then, did you hear that? Then third fret on the B string, fifth fret on the B string, then go back to the fourth fret on the G string, bend it, then play the second fret on the G string. I know, I just said a lot of second fret, fourth fret, bend it, bling it, blang it. Like I said, just getting through it, telling you what you need to know. You get to, you get to watch my hands. Uh, how's it go? Oh, I love it. One more part and then we're done with this very nice video. Last part is very close, very similar to the third part. We go that same thing again. We slide from two up to four. We need to go three, zero, five. So we do a quick little bend up and back down. Then we play third fret on the B string, fourth fret on the G string, third fret on the B string, and then bang to the second fret on the G string. Final little thing, play the fourth fret on the G string, play it, bend it, bring it back down, and then the second fret on the G string one more time. So the whole fourth and final part of the solo goes like this. And then we go to G. And then it goes into the verse. That's it. Like I said, rushed through the solo, blushed through the blow low. We did the verse, we did the intro. I had all kinds of feelings about it and now we're done.